good morning. So we are at the AWS Summit in London where I've been invited down to, uh, to take part in AWS Game Day F1 League. Um, we're going to be going through um, a bunch of the different exhibitions and, um, and talks that AWS have put on today, as well as then also showing you a bit of a vlog about uh, Game Day and F1 League and, um, and how it works. So yeah, follow me. The introductory keynote is about to start, uh, essentially going to be telling us all about um, what's going to be happening at today's event and I assume probably a few new, uh, new things going on with AWS. After the introductory keynote, we moved upstairs to get involved with the AWS Game Day F1 League. Now you might be asking yourself, what is AWS Game Day? Game Day is a 90 minute session where teams compete to complete technical challenges known as quests using the AWS Management Console. F1 League is the Formula 1 themed competition where we've been using real data from the 2022 Spanish Grand Prix. I learned all of this from Rob Smedley who told me all about Game Day and how AWS is supercharging Formula 1's data to create a better fan experience. It was extremely insightful so I'm going to put together another video of our conversation. I would have included it in this video, but it would have made it a little bit too long. Let's hear a bit of our conversation to give you a brief introduction to game day. Now we're upstairs in the AWS game day room where uh, everyone else is, uh, is hard at work competing during their 90 minute session. Rob, can you tell us a bit more about the challenges that they're facing and, uh, and how this whole point system works? Yeah, sure. I mean, you can see all the teams behind us here. There's, there's, there's usually teams of four, sometimes less, um, but you know, principally teams of four developers, DevOps, systems architects, all, all around the table, all working together on the various quests. Um, as they complete the quests, you see the leaderboard behind you there on that big screen. Um, so you can see at the minute that Hercules is on about nine and a half thousand points, so they're probably a little bit ahead, but it doesn't mean to say that the teams behind them, Mercedes and Team One, um, aptly named DSS, you know, all of those teams, they'll catch up. So that changes yeah. dynamically as they complete quests. So it's really exciting to watch that. And, mm. and as you walk around the tables and, and talk to the, the, the teams, you see that where they're at and some are a bit further ahead, some are a bit further behind. Um, but it's really good to see how they approach. So they get scored on quality, they get they get scored on you know how long it takes them to do it, the precision of the output, okay. you know, and they're building all of these um, all of these different challenges and, and um, and, and, and quests on, on AWS services, so, so it's really good they're getting to know that at the same time as well. So once this 90 minute session is over, um, how do the winners know that they've won? Obviously they, they, they see that they've won on the scoreboard, but what happens next for them? What happens next is there's a, there's a prize giving ceremony. Okay. Um, so we'll go downstairs and there'll be a little podium ceremony like there would be in a Formula One race. Um, and then after that, um, they will just get ready to, to go forward to the grand final. So, so, you know, that will be in September towards the end of the year. Um, and then they're going to go forward and they'll take part in the grand final like the other winners from, from, from the other AWS summits. Okay, awesome. Right, well, thank you very much for your time. With all that information fresh in mind, I got stuck in. Here's how it went. I signed up on my own so the AWS team matched me with a team on the day. We named our team four devs, well, because there were four of us. We blitzed through the first challenge and we even made it up to third on the leaderboard at one point. We started to struggle on the second task because we were using AWS Glue, a service that I'd never touched before, so that did drop us down the table. But I did learn how to use Glue, so I call that a win. At this point, we only had around 30 minutes left, so we decided to split up and start working on separate tasks. This proved to work pretty well and we ended up completing another quest just before the time ran out. After the challenge, I made a brief appearance on the AWS live stream where I talked about my game day experience, which was pretty cool. Okay, so we're in the main hall of the AWS Summit now. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot going on here uh, and I'm gonna go around some of the, uh, some of the vendors and uh, see what they're all about. Let's go. Can you tell me a bit more about MongoDB and how, um, how it's useful for developers? So MongoDB is a developer data platformer. We're here to help developers to speed all the integrations and go really quickly in order to make everything in order to get things done really quickly when we want to have things really well done. So this is the database at the beginning, which has been built by developers for developers, but we have really enhanced it in order to get it done and cross the web in order to get this, in order to reduce and simplify the architecture. So that developer have just to focus on what matters. 
accelerated the business, answering what the business is, but also leveraging and reducing all the complexity of the architecture that we have all together. In order to do it, not only we started with just the core database that we have, but we have extended it with full text search capabilities, with data tiering, analytics capabilities. But of course, all of this is really all well secured and is really available across all the regions from AWS. This is where, in fact, the developers can really put their application where they can and where they need to, to, uh, to get it. And this is where we got all of this success because we are really talking about use cases to our customers. And we have lots of verticals and use cases. So see MongoDB as a developer data platform which is really fitting to where it matters also and really as a general purpose developer data platform. Okay. With transactional applications from the mobile or web, and everyone needs a mobile or web application, going back to analytics, extracting all the power uh, from the from the database. Wow! So that was uh, that was pretty cool. Um, now we're going to do a bit more walking around to see if we can find any uh, any other cool stands. Um, I can see I can see Datadog. Um, I don't know if many of you have heard of them. Um, Tell you what, let's let's go let's go have a look at Datadog. Okay, Lola, I've managed to pull you away from uh, away from the Datadog stand. Can you absolutely. tell me a little bit about uh, Datadog and how it's useful for developers? Of course, yeah, absolutely. So essentially, Datadog is a monitoring and observability platform, and what we do is that we help engineers to figure out what their technical issues are before they end up impacting the customer. So we do that by correlating metrics, traces, and logs across the front and back end of your systems. So you have basically a bird's eye view into your entire infrastructure, and you can identify, resolve, and basically detect issues quicker than you probably ever have. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so it's really cool. That's what we do. And um, essentially, we work with uh, DevOps teams, we work with security teams, we work with engineering teams, but really any team within the business that's just trying to get a better view into your infrastructure performance, your uh, metrics, your traces, your logs coming from different applications. So that's what we do. and we displayed on in a really great, easy to read screen so anybody within the team can understand. Awesome, thank you very much. Okay, hey Rob, thanks, uh, thanks for having me. You're on the, uh, on the CockroachDB stand here. Thank you. Can you tell me a little bit more about CockroachDB and how it's useful for developers? So CockroachDB is a distributed SQL database. It provides serializable isolation and strong ACID compliance guarantees, whilst also being able to scale massively, whilst also surviving regional availability and node failures. So if okay. you want to create a global database potentially that can span regions, home data into specific localities, CockroachDB might be a really good fit for you. After speaking to a few more of the vendors, I decided to do some exploring. I ended up looking at some pretty cool tech, as well as learning about how the National History Museum is using AWS to help with their research. And I even tested out my driving skills on the Formula One simulator. It was going pretty well, until this happened. <laughs> Once I had finished making a fool of myself on the simulator, I found this. This is Deep Racer, a self-driving car that uses machine learning to learn the fastest route around a racetrack. It's really cool and it can get really competitive. Wait, did I just say competitive? That's right, there's a competition on who can train a model to race this AI powered car around the track the fastest. I managed to speak to Heather, who was on the Deep Racer team, so she's gonna tell us a bit more about the competition. So Heather, thanks for having me. Um, we're here at the Deep Racer stand now. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about Deep Racer and, um, and the competition that you guys have got going on? Sure. Deep Racer is a winning team scale autonomous car and global racing league. Um, we, it's, uh, it's like a remote controlled car that we teach to drive autonomously. And you can compete uh, all over the world um, to get a spot at reInvent, which in Las Vegas, uh, which is our AWS trade show. And uh, today, the racers are competing for a car to take home, a jacket, and a spot at reInvent. And right now, we have some of the best times we've ever had. We currently are having our world record times today here at the London Summit. And uh, Deep Racer is a hands-on way to learn the basics of reinforcement learning. Uh, we do it for people who are interested in learning how to use the basics of the uh, 
the AWS console, but it, we also teach uh, school children and um, from like lower school all the way to college. So there's a range of skills that you can learn from it. And uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And you mentioned uh, that there's a um, there's a prize for the winner, whoever does the the best with Deep Racer. What what oh, is the yeah. prize? So, at all the global summits, you have the opportunity to win what we mentioned here today, but then the trip to reInvent uh, puts you into the running for $20,000. Oh, wow, and okay. uh, yeah, in addition to the trophy and the jacket and the car. For the purpose of making it interactive, they were allowing attendees at the event to control the speed of the car. So of course, I had to give it a try. Okay, wow, I'm really not a good driver. Okay, so that is it for the AWS Summit here in London. I've really enjoyed competing in the AWS Game Day F1 League, as well as looking around all of the stalls to see what's been going on here at the AWS Summit. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please do leave a like and subscribe. See ya.